The top 10 most valuable running backs of the 1970s. 1970, number 3, Larry Brown. Number 2, Ron Johnson. Number 1, MacArthur Lane. 1971, number 3, Floyd Little. Number 2, Leroy Kelly. Number 1, Steve Owens. 1972, number 3 is Floyd Little. Number 2 is Ron Johnson. Number 1 is Larry Brown. 1973, number 3 is Floyd Little. Number 2 is Larry Brown. Number 1 is O.J. Simpson. 1974, number 3 is Don Woods. Number 2 is Chuck Foreman. Number 1, Otis Armstrong. 1975, number 3 is Lydell Mitchell. Number 2 is Chuck Foreman. Number 1 is O.J. Simpson. 1976, number 3 is O.J. Simpson. Number 2 is Walter Payton. Number 1 is Chuck Foreman. 1977, number 3 is Tony Dorsett. Number 2 is Lawrence McCutcheon. Number 1 is Walter Payton. 1978, number 3 is Terdell Middleton. Number 2 is Tony Dorsett. Number 1 is Walter Payton. In 1979, number 3 is Earl Campbell. Number 2 is Walter Payton. And number 1 is Wilbert Montgomery. Okay, football fans, we're counting down the top 10 most valuable running backs of the 1970s. Coming in at number 10, Sam Cunningham. Cunningham only played 7 out of 10 years for the decade, and he made the Pro Bowl in 1978. He rushed for 5,163 yards and scored 39 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 1,813 receiving yards and six more touchdowns through the air. He scored 776.77 on the FGV scale. Number 9, Larry Brown. Brown also only played in 7 out of 10 years for the decade and made the Pro Bowl in 1970, 71, and 72 and was selected to the All-Pro first team in 70 and 72. He led the league in rushing yards in 1970 with 1,125 and in yards from scrimmage in 1972 with 1,689. That was the same year he won the league MVP and Offensive Player of the Year awards. He rushed for 4,579 yards and scored 28 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 2,183 receiving yards and 20 receiving touchdowns. He scored 800.01 on the FGV scale. Okay, coming in at number 8, Calvin Hill. Hill made the Pro Bowl in 1972, 73, and 74. He missed the 1975 season as he was playing in the World Football League before injuring his knee. He rushed for 5,107 yards and scored 34 touchdowns for the decade. He added another 2,725 receiving yards and 7 receiving touchdowns. He scored an 809.82 on the FGV scale. Number 7, Larry Zonka. Zonka, our first Hall of Famer on the list, played 9 out of 10 years for the decade as he played the 1975 season in the World Football League. He was selected to the Pro Bowl in 1970 through 74 and was selected to the All-Pro first team in 1971 and 73. He rushed for 6,975 yards and scored 56 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He was primarily a runner and added only another 519 receiving yards and two, two receiving touchdowns. He scored a 900.81 on the FGV scale. Okay, at number six on our list, John Riggins. Riggins, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1992, was a rookie in 1971 and, and played nine out of the ten seasons of the 70s. He made the Pro Bowl in 1975. He rushed for 6,822 yards, scored 42 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 1,891 receiving yards and 12 receiving touchdowns. And he scored a 957.08 on the FGV scale. Number 5, Walter Payton. Sweetness, another Hall of Famer, only played in 5 out of 10 years for the decade as he was a rookie in 1975. He was selected to the Pro Bowl in 76 through 79 and was selected to the All-Pro first team in 1976 and 77 won the league MVP and Offensive Player of the Year award in 1975, and he led the league in rushing attempts from 1976 through 79, and yards and touchdowns in 1977 with 1,852 and 14 respectively. He also led the league in yards from scrimmage in 1977 and 78. He rushed for 6,926 yards and scored 59 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 1,424 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. He scored a 977.40 on the FGV scale. Okay, number four on our list, Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell, who hasn't been inducted into the Hall of Fame as of yet, only played in eight out of the ten years for the decade as he was a rookie in 72. He led the league in receptions in 1974 and 77. 
He rushed for 6,518 yards and scored 30 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 3,182 receiving yards and 17 receiving touchdowns. He scored a 979.25 on the FGV scale and narrowly edged out emerging superstar Walter Payton by less than two points. Number three, Chuck Foreman. Foreman, another player on our list not yet in the Hall of Fame, only played in seven out of ten years for the decade. He was a rookie in 1973, and he led the league in receptions in 1975 and won the Offensive Rookie of the Year in 73. He rushed for 5,887 yards and is fourth on our list and the number of rushing touchdowns scored with 52. He added another 3,057 receiving yards and 23 receiving touchdowns. He is the first player on our list to crack the 1,000 mark for FGV and scored 1,092.40 on the FGV scale. Okay, the number two player on our list is Franco Harris. Harris, another Hall of Famer, only played in 8 out of the 10 years for the decade, as he was a rookie in 1972. He was selected to the Pro Bowl every year he played in the 70s, and was selected to the All-Pro First Team in 77, and won the Offensive Rookie of the Year in 1972. He rushed for 8,563 yards and scored a whopping 72 rushing touchdowns for the decade. He added another 1,311 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. He scored a 1,177.11 on the FGV scale. And the number one most valuable running back of the 1970s is O.J. Simpson. Simpson is the only player on our list that played all 10 seasons throughout the decade. He led the league in rushing attempts in 1973, 74, and 75, and rushing yards in 1972, 73, 75, and 76, and rushing touchdowns in 1973 and 75. He also led the league in yards from scrimmage in 1973, 5, and 6. He won the league MVP and Offensive Player of the Year awards in 1973 and made the Pro Bowl and All-Pro First Team each year from 1972 all the way through 1976. He is the only player to rush for 10,000 yards in the decade with 10,539 yards, and he also scored 59 rushing touchdowns. He added another 1,799 receiving yards and 11 receiving touchdowns. He scored a 1,290.60 on the FGV scale. Okay, now it should be noted that all of Simpson's professional accomplishments have been overshadowed by a dark cloud of suspicion around the murder of Ronald Goldman and his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. The pursuit, arrest, and trial of O.J. Simpson were among the most widely publicized events in American history. The trial, often characterized as the trial of the century, culminated after 11 months on October 3, 1995, when the jury rendered a verdict of not guilty for the two murders. I can tell you from watching almost all of the available footage of the trial that he most assuredly is not innocent, even though he was found not guilty. Following Simpson's acquittal of criminal charges, Ron Goldman's family filed a civil lawsuit against Simpson. February 5, 1997, a civil jury in Santa Monica, California, unanimously found Simpson liable for the wrongful death of and battery against Goldman and battery against Brown. Simpson's legacy will forever be tarnished by his off-the-field issues. Okay, that's my top 10 most valuable running backs of the 1970s. Let me know in the comments how I did. Who did I leave off the list? Or who would you replace on my list? Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.